this is the uh, compact flash uh, that we will be working on today fully disassembled and the board needs to be prepped just a little to get this going we got four memory chips uh, we have a controller uh, and we have a board that needs to be put back together now uh, this won't solve every single issue with the CF card made by Lexar uh, but often enough uh, we do see uh, devices that come in with either uh, connection problems on the controller or connection problems on the uh, memory uh, component so uh, by following this procedure most of the time these cases do get solved if they don't get solved this way we recover data directly from memory chips through the chip off recovery procedure so let's begin Let's start with the uh, prep of the board. Just because the board is really uh, thin, I don't want to, and it looks like it's already deforming. I don't want to put any pressure on it. You see how crooked it is getting? Hopefully that's not affecting it yet. That's done. Right now what I'm doing is I'm uh, cleaning oxidized pads. Those oxidized pads may be the, the leading cause of the um, malfunction on the device. 
If they oxidize too much, they uh, lose their connection. Okay, memory chips are checked and uh, cleaned. Let's not deal with the controller. On this part, it's very important to make sure that these um, darker spots um, become shiny because, because those pads are very important. And the controller is now done. Okay, so uh, now we're ready to reball and prep those components for mounting. Apply the paste with the spatula, distribute it. That's it. That's chip one. Now we got to do the same for the rain for the remaining three, and then it's on to the controller. I'm gonna stand circle for the controller right here. Let's have a look at this piece. Yeah, very nice. I like. I like. Okay, let's get the board back. These pads don't look that great.
nonetheless, they are still connected. The rest seems to look good. Let's mount it. So we're gonna mount the controller first and I wanna see if it's gonna fall into a safe mode. So through safe mode, we should be able to see a controller get mounted. Show up on the system. And if it does, we're on the right track. At 40 airflow and 350 heat, see that it's moving, it's flowing. Yeah, that is, that's very nice. Just in case some flux might have got in um, and the, the interface, I always uh, use this dummy connector to kind of clear the path for the for the one that I'm using for work. So the um, adapter that I'm gonna plug it into, I don't want to contaminate it with flux, so just kind of take this extra step. There is our device connected with the USB cable and this is you of all the devices that are attached. And over here we have a multiple card reader, I don't know, like this is, let me set this aside. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it, over here it says uh, generic compact flash, 31.99 megabytes. That's uh, identification for the safe mode. The fact that it indicates uh, 32 megabytes uh, shows that the controller is visible through USB. If we go into, um, uh, hex view it's gonna have uh, repeating patterns zero 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 one zero two and so on and so forth all the way through that's how it's supposed to look like so now we're ready to mount uh, memory chips on there and see if we can actually load them up memory chips as they come from the device they have a sequence and uh, if that sequence is not kept, then nothing will work. It will just not work, period, because different chips contain different information, and that information uh, is uh, referred to by the controller, and if it's in the wrong place, then it might as well not be there at all. Let's uh, mount this thing up. So I did notice that one pad was missing on the back side and we'll probably get to it when we see um, that back side there. But I don't think it's gonna be important because it's on the uh, exterior and it's not a signed pad. It's not connected pad. Uh, for us, it doesn't really change anything at all. So I'm not gonna bother restoring that pad. If that was uh, a pad that is in the center grid, um, then absolutely it would need to be fixed before mounting anything back up because if it's not fixed then it's not good <laughs> it's not gonna work so the first stop side where the controller is is the uh, uh, side for chip one and chip two.
I intentionally put them a little bit crooked, that way when they get sucked in into the proper place, um, I'll be able to see it easily. And same temperature setting as uh, the controller, 350 at uh, 40 airflow. We'll get things moving with this device. There you go. Give it a little nudge just to make sure that it's moving without any force. Right here, this corner, we're going to be watching this corner. As soon as it pushes in closer towards that line, we know that it's good. it for this side give it a few moments to rest it's probably hot as hell right now yeah, I'm okay with that yeah, this is the one that would, was missing a pad right there. That pad is not assigned to anything. We don't need it there. It's uh, not gonna change anything at all. So it's gonna move two times. First the top part will move, then the bottom part will move. And that is it. So now, same as before, I'm gonna put the frame up. Clean the interface first. I don't think anything would have got in there now, but uh, small step to take as a precautionary measure. This is it, let's try it out. We're gonna slide the card in the same way we had it, but just with the memory chips this time. Use the uh, USB cable. The light comes on. And look at this. As soon as we pop this thing in, It automatically mounts itself. So that is the way I deal with uh, a lot of these uh, compact flashcards uh, these days. Uh, the technique is working pretty good and uh, worst comes to worst, if uh, there was let's say a problematic memory chip, I got one of these cards actually right now with a problematic memory chip that uh, the controller by itself does fall into the safe mode, but as soon as I mount memory components, it does not want to um, do anything with it. It just um, doesn't initialize. 
So in those specific cases, I have to read data directly from uh, the memory chips uh, using NAND protocol and then reconstruct data from physical image and convert it into a logical image to get the files working. Uh, for uh, cars that simply have connection issues, uh, the procedures that you guys saw today will definitely take care of uh, anything but you got to make sure that the board is healthy the board is not broken the pads are not corroded on any of the essential components and uh, this will be good so thank you very much for tuning in uh, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're new to this channel also notification button will tell you when the next video drops so definitely hit that and i'll see you guys in the next episode